Hello everyone. My today's lesson is about respiratory distress syndrome, one of the most common problem of prematurity. Uh, when we start from introduction, respiratory distress syndrome, formerly referred to as highly membrane disease, uh, remains a dominant clinical problem encountered among preterm infants. Uh, predominant causes inadequate pulmonary surfactant because of the age-dependent production of pulmonary surfactant. Uh, the fetal lung is filled with fluid and the it provides no respiratory function until after birth. Uh, in preparation for air breathing during the third trimester of pregnancy, uh, surfactant is expressed in the lung and the antioxidants are uh, in uh, Because of the developmental regulation of surfactant production, the most common cause of surfactant, surfactant deficiency is preterm delivery. Uh, this respiratory distress syndrome is slightly uh, more common in males than female. Uh, for 2% of infants, uh, between 500 to 1,500 gram uh, birth weight is thought to have a respiratory distress syndrome. But the prevalence and the severity increases as the birth weight decreases. So uh, around 71% of birth weight between 500 to 750 gram is thought to have a respiratory distress syndrome, whereas around 22% of uh, those who have a birth weight between 1.25 to 1.5 kg is uh, thought to have a respiratory distress syndrome. In addition, mutations in the genes encoding surfactant protein B and surfactant protein C can cause hereditary respiratory failure in infants born at uh, Respiratory distress syndrome is one of the most common causes of morbidity in preterm neonates and it is observed in around 10% of all premature infants. And the greatest incidence is in those weighing less than 1,500 grams or gestational age less than 32 weeks. The diagnosis can be established pathologically or by biochemical documentation of surfactant deficiency. Uh, the risk factor overall is the most common is prematurity, but as there are other risk factors such as maternal diabetes, uh, male gender, second born twin, caesarean section delivery, and perinatal asphyxia. Uh, perinatal asphyxia increases the risk of having uh, respiratory distress syndrome because uh, surfactant production needs. Uh, appropriate uh, oxygen and the temperature level for uh, production, whereas during perinatal asphyxia, there is hypoxia. Hypoxia uh, inhibits surfactant production. Uh, when we see surfactant metabolism, surfactant contains 70 to 80% phospholipid, 8 to 10% protein, and 10% neutral lipids, primarily cholesterol. Uh, the phosphatidylcholine species of the phospholipids represents about 60% uh, by weight of the surfactant and about 80% of the phospholipid. Uh, the type uh, the type 2 cell is responsible for the major pathway involved in surfactant metabolism. As you know, type 1 alveolar cells are squamous and extremely thin cells and it is involved in the process of gas exchange between the alveolus and the blade. Whereas type 2 alveolar cells are involved in the secretion of the surfactant protein. So surfactant secretion and the metabolism is by type 2 alveolar cell. Uh, when we came to the protein components of the surfactant, surfactant contains protein B and C and also protein A and D. Uh, from this surfactant protein B and C, surfactant protein B and C are required for normal pulmonary function. Uh, infants with mutations in surfactant protein B gene resulting in deficient or abnormal surfactant protein B expression has severe respiratory failure that is later in the perinatal period. Uh, whereas surfactant protein C promotes the formation of phospholipid film lining the alveolus. Uh, Women with surfactant protein C deficiency does not have respiratory uh, distress at birth like that of surfactant protein B. Rather, they develop interstitial pulmonary fibrosis in early childhood. Uh, when we see surfactant protein A and D, uh, this surfactant protein A and D are small hydrophilic proteins that are members of the collecting protein family. Uh, the primary role of this protein is in the host defense of the lung. So, uh, they facilitate the uptake and the killing of bacterial and the viral pathogen by immune cells and they appear to have a direct microbial role. Uh, when we see the surface tension, uh, there is a Laplace law, or according to the Laplace law, the pressure necessary to keep the sphere open is proportional to the surface tension and it is inversely proportional to the radius of the sphere uh, shown by uh, this formula. So the pressure necessary to keep the alveolus open is proportional to its surface tension and it is inversely proportional to the radius. Uh, if surface tension is high, the alveolar volume is small as occurs at end expiration. 
the pressure necessary to maintain the alveolus open is high. Uh, if this increased pressure cannot be generated, uh, the alveolus collapses. If this occurs throughout the lung, alveolar collapse results in a diffuse atelectasis, which in turn leads to hypoxemia. Uh, pulmonary surfactant reduces the surface tension even at low volumes, leading to a decrease in the required pressure and maintaining alveolar stability. Uh, lung maturity can be hastened pharmacologically, and steroids when administered to the mother at least 24 to 48 hours before delivery uh, decrease the incidence and the severity of the respiratory distress syndrome. Corticosteroids appear to be most effective before 34 weeks of gestation and when administered at least 24 hours and no longer than 7 days before delivery. Because corticosteroid therapy for less than 24 hours is still associated with significant reduction in neonatal mortality, uh, respiratory distress syndrome and intraventricular hemorrhage, uh, it is important to give corticosteroid. Uh, when we see pathophysiology, the lungs of infants who come from RDS have a characteristic uniformly ruddy and airless appearance and a microscopic resembling hepatic tissue. On microscopic examination, the striking feature is diffuse atelectasis such that only a few widely dilated alveoli are uh, readily distinguishable. This characteristic membrane from which the terpylene membrane disease is derived consists of a fibrinous matrix of materials derived from the blade and the contained cellular debris uh, derived from injured epithelium. The recovery phase is characterized by regeneration of alveolar cells, including the type 2 alveolar cells with a resultant increase in surfactant activity. Uh, this is the uh, uh, pathological examination of the alveolus with uh, respiratory the child with respiratory distress in them. There is a collapsed alveolus and the hyaline membrane formation, and cells embedded within uh, hyaline membrane the formation is seen on the uh, image. Surfactant synthesis is a dynamic process that depends on factors such as pH, temperature, and perfusion. Uh, the leakage of proteins such as fibrin in the interalveolar space further aggravates surfactant deficiency by promoting surfactant inactivation. Uh, deficiency of surfactant and the accompanying a decrease in lung compliance lead to alveolar hypoventilation and the ventilation perfusion uh, imbalance. When we see the clinical features of respiratory distress in them, infants with respiratory distress in them characteristically present immediately after delivery or within several hours of birth. The most common signs and symptoms include desaturation, apneic episodes, retraction, expiratory granting, pallor, cardiovascular instability, cyanosis, peripheral edema, and transmitted breath sound. Uh, when, we say the, when we see the chest radiograph, uh, the typical radiographic feature consists of a diffuse reticulogranular appearance. Uh, this is primarily caused by alveolar atractasis, although there might be some components of pulmonary edema. Uh, in the most severe cases, a complete weight out of lungs can be observed with a total loss of uh, heart borders. Heart size is also typically normal or slightly increased. Uh, the radiographic appearance of RDS cannot be reliably differentiated from that of neonatal pneumonia, especially from uh, GBS. The major reason for the widespread use of antibiotics in the initial management of infants with RDS is uh, due to similar chest X-ray findings of neonatal pneumonia due to GBS and also that of uh, hyaline membrane disease. The uncomplicated clinical course is characterized by a progressive worsening of symptoms with a peak severity by day 2 to 3 and onset of recovery by 72 hours. Uh, surfactant therapy often greatly shortens uh, this course. And in the most affected uh, patients, the transition from the recovery phase of respiratory distress syndrome to BPDs uh, clinically uh, is difficult to differentiate. Uh, when we, we see the chest x ray, uh, we, even we can grade. Uh, respiratory distress syndrome by their chest x-ray finding. We can say mild hyaline membrane disease or mild respiratory distress syndrome if there is a normal uh, chest x-ray. And moderate respiratory distress syndrome uh, is uh, shown on chest x-ray uh, by having reticulogranular appearance as you see on the chest x-ray. Whereas severe uh, respiratory distress syndrome is almost weight out lung uh, or ground glass appearance and the it is almost difficult to differentiate uh, heart border from that of lung, as you see on the image. So, uh, we can grade the severity of respiratory distress syndrome by chest x uh, To see the differential diagnosis, uh, the most common differential diagnosis is transient tachypnea of the newborn. Transient tachypnea of the newborn is most of the time it is a, almost a uh, disease of uh, 
let pretend babies and this improvement is so fast and also we can differentiate by uh, chest x-ray so the gestational age of trans a child with uh, infant with transient tachypnea newborn is uh, almost late preterm and also there is rapid improvement within 24 to 36 hours and also uh, chest x-ray finding uh, and also congenital pneumonia as we have said congenital pneumonia uh, due to group b streptococcus looks like on the chest x-ray uh, that of uh, respiratory distress syndrome but we should have to start antibiotics and we should have to send uh, uh, septic workup cbc asr and uh, crp uh, to differentiate and also blade culture to differentiate uh, infectious causes of chest x-ray finding from that of respiratory distress syndrome uh, the others are air leaks and also congenital airway malformations such as cpam and also congenital disease uh, can have similar uh, clinical presentation but we should have to further work up and also should have to identify by strength physical examination based on gestational age of the baby and also based on the vital signs such as pulse oximetry and also just uh, precordial examination findings uh, the shake test or bubble test or foam test is a simple rapid method of estimation of uh, fetal lung maturity uh, the shake test has the advantage of being easy to perform and giving on the spot results which compare favorability with uh, the slightly more accurate amniotic fluid parameters of fetal maturity mentioned uh, a positive shake test is particularly valuable as it practically excludes the possibility of neonatal rds the shake test is based on the ability of the phospholipids particularly the cystine and the sphingomyelin to support a ring of bubbles on the surface of various dilutions of amniotic fluid uh, which is placed on the series of test tubes so, so it is done by uh, taking gastric aspirate from the neonate around 2 ml and uh, mixing it with alcohol uh, 0.5 ml uh, then we should have to shake for 50 seconds and we keep it also for additional 5 seconds and then uh, when no bubbles are seen we see uh, the chance of having island membrane disease 60% but when bubbles cover uh, one third of the liquid surface or less there is around 20% chance of having uh, island membrane disease and the other mechanism is uh, doing the sickness sphingomyelin uh, ratio uh, fetal lung maturity can be estimated prenatally by examination of the amniotic fluid usually obtained by transabdominal amniocentesis for lecithin uh, lecithin and the sphingomyelin ratio or p factor a fairly accurate prediction of ability of the fetus to survive outside the uterus should be delivered within a short time following the, this test so the risk of island membrane is, is less if the ratio of lecithin to sphingomyelin ratio is greater than 2 Exception is if the, if the infant is infant of diabetic mother, if there is perinatal asphyxia or erythroblastosis fetalis. Otherwise, we can estimate fetal lung maturity by uh, doing uh, transabdominal amniocentesis and doing lecithin to sphingomyelin ratio. If it is greater than 2, the risk of filing membrane disease is uh, less likely. Uh, the other is lamellar body count. Uh, lamellar bodies are package of phospholipids produced by type 2 pneumocytes and it presents in amniotic fluid and the numbers increase with gestational age so if the lamellar body count is greater than 50,000 uh, it predicts uh, lung maturity uh, just uh, when we see the treatment of uh, respiratory distress in them the basic defect requiring treatment in RDS is inadequate pulmonary oxygen carbon dioxide exchange so basic supportive care such as thermoregulatory circulatory fluid electrolyte and respiratory essential why uh, functional residual capacity established and maintained. Uh, careful and the frequent monitoring of earth and respiratory rate, uh, oxygen saturation, partial pressure of oxygen, uh, partial pressure of carbon dioxide, pH, electrolyte, glucose, hematocrit, blood pressure, and temperature are all essential. Uh, most uh, Because most cases of RDS are self limited, the goal of treatment is to minimize abnormal physiologic variation and superimpose iatrogenic problems. Uh, so, uh, treatment of funds should be uh, in neonatal intensive care unit and in addition uh, the most important thing that we can do is uh, initiating continuous positive airway pressure early use of CPAP for stabilization of at risk preterm infants beginning early that means in the delivery room reduce the need for mechanical ventilation uh, in a premature babies so warm humidified oxygen should be uh, provided at a concentration sufficient to keep a partial pressure of oxygen between 50 to 70 that means saturation between 91 to 95 and to maintain normal tissue oxygenation uh, while minimizing the risk of oxygen toxicity 
So if there is a significant respiratory distress or if the saturation cannot be kept more than 90% uh, with a fault of more than 40% and uh, we should have to start CPAP at 5 to 10 centimeter of water. But most of the time starting CPAP uh, early in the delivery room is very important uh, to reduce the need for mechanical ventilation. Nasal CPAP reduces the collapse of surfactant deficient alveolus and improves both functional residual capacity and ventilation perfusion mismatch. Uh, in severe cases, uh, newborn with a respiratory distress syndrome might need mechanical ventilation. Uh, infants with a respiratory failure or persistent apnea requires assisted by uh, mechanical ventilation. Uh, strict definition for respiratory failure in extremely preterm infants with RDS are not agreed on universally. But reasonable measures of respiratory failure, such as arterial blood pH uh, less than 7.2, partial pressure of carbon dioxide greater than or equal to 60 mm mercury, saturation less than 90%, at oxygen concentration of uh, 40 to 70%, and the CPAP of 5 to 10 cm of water, and persistent or severe uh, apnea, uh, those things are an indication to uh, make a child on mechanical ventilation. And the other important thing is uh, surfactant therapy. Uh, assistant ventilation and surfactants are indicated for infants with RDS who cannot keep oxygen saturation more than 90% uh, while breathing 40-70% of oxygen and receiving CPAP. Uh, so there are different types of uh, surfactants. Uh, in an effort to minimize ventilatory associated lung injury and preventing long-term pulmonary complication, the use of CPAP as the initial respiratory support for extremely preterm infants is preferred. The decreased need for ventilatory support with the use of CPAP may allow lung inflation to be uh, maintained while preventing lung injury. Uh, so, early CPAP is beneficial compared to intubation and the prophylactic surfactant uh, because avoidance of mechanical ventilation is associated with a reduction in death and the BPD. Uh, but uh, still, there is a place for surfactant therapy. Uh, if the child is not improving with those things, we can give surfactant. And uh, there are different modes of administering surfactant and the different types of surfactant on the market. We can give it as a rescue therapy or as early therapy or as a continued therapy. Uh, so, uh, this, uh, it is important to give a surfactant for a uh, severe RDS uh, in preterm babies. The other thing is, is complication. There are different complications that occurs uh, during RDS. Some of them is uh, due to the disease itself and the other is due to uh, iatrogen due, uh, during our treatment course. Uh, pulmonary air leak, intubation related problems, BPD, and uh, might happen and the prevention is prevention of preacher labor and the delivery and also if we can't uh, avoid having premature labor and delivery at least it's important to give antenatal corticosteroid therapy and the other thing is uh, early start of CPAP and surfactant administration uh, thank you for your attention and also thank you for subscribing this channel